Okay, guys. Now let's try and understand. Okay, guys. Now let's try. Okay, guys. Now let's try and see. That's my bird pet, which is calling me. So let's talk about cyclic process. All right. What happens in case of cyclic process? Now, in case of cyclic process, what happens is now it goes from A to B, and then return back to A. Now, when we compare cyclic process and reversible process, let's compare state A of cyclic with state A of reversible. Same energy. State B of cyclic process and state B of reversible process. Same energy. But is the path same? No. In case of reversible process, what do we find? We find that it goes this way and retraces back the same path. But do we find the same story over here? No. Here it goes via this path and returns back via this path. So there are series of changes occurring over here in this process. All right. Now those series of changes which occur, they consume some energy. All right. So what do we conclude? We conclude from this that cyclic processes are always reversible. But reversible processes are not cyclic always. All right. Cyclic could be either anti-clockwise or clockwise. All right. I would be dealing with this a bit later. All right. So that's the major difference between cyclic process and reversible process. All right. That's one thing statement which you have to keep in mind always. All right. Now let's talk about the energy which I talked over here. How do we get this energy? Now suppose the process is going from A to B and coming back from B to A. All right. I already mentioned in my earlier video. These are all TV graphs. All right. Okay. So in cyclic process, this is what happens. Now, let's talk in terms of energy. P del V. This is del V. Change in energy. Pressure del V. So work. P del V is work. So it's doing work. So when it is going from A to B this way, this way, this is the area which we have got to calculate. And this area is the work done. Another thing that I intend to ask you is now initial volume was less, final volume was more. So the process is expansion. In case of physics, so process is expansion. Now, in case of expansion, what happens? In case of expansion, if I talk about this is the piston and it has expanded. Gas has expanded means the piston has come here now. So it has come here. So who has done it? Internal pressure has done the work or rather system has done the work. And if system does the work, then we know in case of physics thermodynamics, it's positive. All right. So it's positive. So this is this is this part, which is positive. So this part which is there is this part. So this is the area covered and this area covered is for expansion and expansion means that the system is doing work and when system is doing work, it's positive in physics. So we write here positive work. Now let's talk about this part B to A. This is what is B to A. Now for B to A, this is the area which it has covered in the process. All right. Now W2. Now here, what is happening here? It is now if I draw a diagram and show over here, now what is happening is if the piston was here, it has now moved here. All right, so who is acting on it? It is external pressure which is acting. So work is being done on the system. Whenever work is being done on the system, in case of physics, it's always negative. All right, so this is negative work, this is positive work. Now this obviously is much more than this so w2 work i call this as w2 i call this as w2 
W2 is greater than W1. Now, therefore, total work in cyclic process, this was what? Anticlockwise, right? In anticlockwise direction is negative. All right. And if it would have been clockwise direction, the trend would have been reverse. All right. So there, the process would have been positive. So what do we conclude? We conclude that whenever moving in clockwise direction, the process, the work would be positive. In the process, the work would be positive. Whereas when it goes anti-clockwise direction, the work would be negative. Okay.